Hello, I'm the NDP candidate here for Kormidi Kukulam and I've had the honour of being a city councillor here for the last eight years and I have to say that it's gotten harder for people to get by in this community. Certainly I've learned over the years how to fight for people and with the current housing crisis we found it that more and more families are having to move farther and farther away from our community to make ends meet. With the Justin Trudeau housing crisis, they have not been able to stay in the communities where they were raised, where they were born, and where, where the rest of their, their, their parents and much of their family lives. Now, Jagmeet Singh, Jagmeet Singh and his team is ready to take on this housing crisis head on. Uh, we are willing to and ready to uh, represent you, fight for you in the community. I wanted to just go ahead and, and introduce Jagmeet Singh today. I'm so happy that he's come out to the Tri-Cities again. Thank you, Jagmeet. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to say a huge thank you to Benita Zarillo. You got to hear a bit of her passion for her community. She is someone that's long been a fighter for the people of Port Moody, Coquitlam. She cares deeply, and as you can hear, she wants to solve the problems that people are going through. And one of those big problems is housing. Donc, dans cette dans cette communauté, on a vu des impacts du, de la crise du logement. C'est vraiment une crise qui frappe fort à travers les pays, et on veut faire face à cette crise. Avec Justin Trudeau comme Premier ministre, la situation s'est empirée. Et on est dans une situation maintenant où les gens qui veulent rester chez eux, dans leur communauté, dans leur vie, ne peuvent pas à cause euh, du frais de logement parce que ça coûte trop cher. C'est impossible de trouver un logement abordable. On veut régler ça et une chose qu'on veut faire, c'est qu'on veut, veut faire face aux riches investisseurs qui utilisent le marché immobilier pour gagner des profits. On a des mesures pour faire face à ça. On va aussi aider dans la construction de 500 000 nouveaux logements sociaux et abordables. So what we want to do today, we're announcing our plan to tackle this housing crisis. One of the big problems that we're seeing is that very wealthy investors are using the housing market like a stock market. And we want to tackle that. We want to get big money out of housing. So if someone here in Port Moody Coquitlam is looking to buy their home, they shouldn't have to compete with people with deep pockets that are gaming the housing market like a stock market. They shouldn't have to put up with that. And so one of the ways we're going to tackle that is by increasing the capital gains tax. We want to increase it up to 75%, bringing it back to what it used to be not too long ago. The Liberals changed that, and in doing that, really encouraged property flipping and made it so that more and more people were using the housing market like a stock market. We want to stop that. We know that people need to find a home that they can afford. The other thing that we know, and it's particularly important here in BC, is we've seen how directly money laundering and criminal activity are driving up the cost of housing. We can also tackle that. And while the BC NDP has done a lot to tackle it provincially, it's really something that needs federal partnership. The federal government is in the best position to tackle money laundering and to tackle the illegal activities that are driving up the cost of housing. Together, we can tackle the housing crisis, but it's going to take courage, it's going to take making it a priority, and it's going to take new Democrats. So you have a choice in this election. You can vote for the Liberals who've made this housing crisis even worse, who've made it even harder for people to afford homes. Here in Port Moody, Coquitlam, we say the average home has gone up nationally over $300,000, here in Port Moody, Coquitlam, it's over the average, it's higher than that. We can fix this. If you vote, if you want to fix this though, you've got to come out and vote. You've got to vote New Democrat to tackle the housing crisis so that you and your families can find a place that's in your budget, so your children can find a place that they can actually afford and stay in their communities. We can do this and that's what we're committed to doing today. Uh, thank you so much, merci beaucoup. Et avec ça, je suis prêt pour vos questions. First question, we have Kevin Gallagher from CTV News. Good morning. Um, Good morning. So we've heard from the United States today that they're actually advising Americans not to come to Canada because of our COVID-19 situation. Um, of course, we haven't opened up both sides here. We've just allowed them to come, Americans to come to Canada. But what do you think this says about 
uh, our situation? Should we reevaluate um, sending or opening up travel, non essential travel, for Canadians to go to the other side of the border? I uh, appreciate the question. It, one of the things that I, I think about anytime I think about border crossing are, are the border towns in Canada where lots of people have been really isolated from their friends, their family, their lives. A lot of cities, I grew up in Windsor, in a city like Windsor, people are so interconnected. So this, this limit on being able to travel across the border has been very, very tough. That being said, we also need to know that we are making decisions that are in the best interest of keeping people safe. And to do that, we've got to follow the expert advice that we get from public health, and we've got to make good decisions around how we keep people safe. One of the things, though, that Justin Trudeau has not done a good job about, or a job with, is making sure there's clear transparency around when we're going to open up, how that's going to look like, when that's going to happen. Uh, we need to know a plan so that people can plan their lives. For my follow-up, I just want to ask about today's announcement. Um, <coughs> so you're going to raise capital gains taxes on you know, selling a second residence, non-primary house. Um, Canada's economy, according to StatsCan, actually shrunk, contracted in the second quarter 1.1%, largely due to declining home sales. Um, so is there any concern that many of your policies involve raising taxes to try and incentivize less purchasing, but could that also affect overall long-term economic growth? Uh, this is a really important question. It's about the type of economic growth that we want. We don't want economic growth to be driven by rich investors that want to make profit off of housing, or foreign investors that see an opportunity to invest in our Canadian housing market, driving up the cost of housing for Canadians who can't afford a home. So what we want to do is to unlock the ability of Canadians to buy their own home. To do that, we need to tackle the housing crisis, we need to build more homes that are in people's budgets, and that's really our goal. We want to make sure that people can find a home they can afford. We want young people who are thinking that they can never own a home ever in their lifetimes to not have that despair and have hope instead that we can actually fix this problem and make sure that they can own a home. And that's what we want to do. We want to incentivize Canadians here in our country being able to own a home. And these, these are some of the steps that we're taking to make that happen. Next question, Adam Hi, good morning. Yes. Um, I, the Liberals have announced a plan to also target home flippers uh, if somebody hasn't held a property for 12 months. Uh, your release talks about people who renovate them quickly. I'm wondering if there's a specific target attached to that. Uh, the big difference, the Liberal planner is really just delaying the problem. It's not actually solving the problem. It's just about putting a timeline in place. Our measure is to fix what the Liberals broke, the, the system that they messed up by increasing or by reducing capital gains, which really encouraged more of that using, you know, this is just the the wealthiest, 88% of the folks that use the, the capital gains tax to their advantage are, are the 1%, are the wealthiest. So we want to tackle the fact that this market, uh, the housing market, is being used by super wealthy to make it harder for everyday folks to actually buy their first, first home. And so that's our approach, and, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, when uh, Aaron O'Toole came out with his housing plan, your party slammed it for having a bunch of loopholes. But I mean, I just asked you about a time limit for this, and you didn't give me a specific answer. And a lot of this seems vague. So, when you talk about wealthy speculators, I mean, like, what about people who own a cottage? Or can you give more specifics about who exactly you're targeting and, and how this plan will be enacted? Surely, uh, we're talking about increasing the capital gains tax uh, immediately, so that it will discourage people who are using the housing market as a stock market. Uh, this does not at all include folks that have a cottage, folks that are farmers and, and their farm property. This is strictly about getting at people who aren't living in their homes, they're using it to make money. That's what we're trying to get at. Uh, and to do that, we are gonna increase the capital gains tax to make it happen. We also wanna get at some of the, uh, the criminal activity that's driving up the cost of housing. Uh, we wanna get at money laundering want to get at the illegal activity that's driving up the cost of housing. So we can do this. The housing market or the housing price has only gotten worse with Justin Trudeau in power for the past six years. We are going to invest to make this better for you. Bonjour, Monsieur Singh. Uh, le chef, uh, Alors, re bonjour. Le chef du Bloc québécois uh, ce matin a parlé de laïcité. Uh, il a... Uh, Rappeler une demande euh, du gouvernement du Québec, c'est-à-dire que tous les partis s'engagent à ne pas euh, financer de constation judiciaire de la loi 21 au Québec. Euh, 
pourquoi euh, croyez-vous que le chef du Bloc québécois insiste là-dessus aujourd'hui et vous engagez-vous à respecter cette demande de Québec? Euh, premièrement, je veux, je veux dire clairement, on est pour la laïcité. On est pour la séparation entre l'Église et l'État. C'est essentiel et je comprends au Québec comment c'était difficile parce que on avait une, euh, une approche où l'Église avait trop de pouvoir sur la vie des gens et comment ça a fait mal aux femmes en particulier, comment ça a brisé les droits des communautés qui étaient vécues. Donc on est pour la laïcité, on est pour les droits des gens, on est pour les droits des femmes et les droits des communautés qui étaient vécues. Et avec la question de contestation, c'est un processus indépendant et ça doit rester indépendant. Ça ne doit pas être les politiciens qui disent oui ou non si quelqu'un peut contester une loi. On doit garder un système indépendant pour que les gens puissent faire une contestation. In English, please. Uh, we absolutely, fundamentally believe in the separation of church and state. Of course we do. In fact, we've seen how the impact of the church on the lives of people in Quebec meant that women had less rights, less access to things like the right to have an abortion, how it directly impacted the LGBTQ community. So, of course, we believe in that separation and we will continue to support that. When it comes to the process by which people can apply to challenge the law, that process should obviously remain independent. It shouldn't be that a politician can tell someone they can or can't contest a law and, and that they will or will not have funding to do so. That obviously should remain independent from the politicians. And so we will support that remaining independent. Je reviens au propos de M. Blanchet. Il vous a accusé aujourd'hui et à plusieurs reprises depuis le début de la campagne de, de traiter les Québécois de racistes ou du moins de soutenir de tels propos. Euh, Craignez-vous que votre position sur la loi 21, par exemple, vous nuise au Québec? Euh, pas du tout. Et je veux être clair, il n'y a pas une position unanime au Québec. Il y a plusieurs Québécois, des millions de Québécois et Québécois qui sont contre une loi qui divise. Moi aussi, évidemment. Je, je ne préfère pas, je n'aime pas les lois qui divisent et qui créent des, nouveaux, des nouvelles discriminations. Je veux travailler ensemble avec tous les, tous les Québécois. Je veux bâtir une société où tout le monde peut, peut, peut participer. Et euh, ça, c'était toujours mon but. Aussi, je veux être clair, je suis contre la discrimination. Ça inclut la discrimination contre les francophones et le Québec. Je suis contre le Québec bashing. Euh, je sais comment les gens sont, sont dérangés, sont frustrés par la continuation de la Quebec bashing et aussi pour les gens qui veulent faire face à la racisme systémique ou la discrimination systémique. Ça n'aide pas de dire que c'est quelque chose qui existe dans une province ou dans un territoire quand on sait que c'est un problème à travers le pays. Un grand exemple, c'est la communauté autochtone qui n'ont pas accès à l'eau potable et c'est un enjeu qui frappe fort à travers le Canada. Donc, euh, euh, je rejette euh, les propos euh, absolument de, de M. Blanchet et il sait euh, que notre position, c'est qu'on est des alliés pour le Québec, on veut euh, les aider et on a déjà les aidés pendant la pandémie. Et les autres partis d'opposition ne peuvent pas dire la même chose. Give me a second here. The question that you pushed? Yeah, just to okay. have it. The question was, uh, Mr. Masha was saying um, that your party doesn't right. support the right. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, absolutely, uh, I, I reject this notion. In fact, uh, Mr. Blanchet knows that, that systemic discrimination is something that impacts people across the country and it is very unhelpful, in fact hurtful to the cause of actually fighting systemic discrimination and uh, racial discrimination and systemic discrimination to believe that it's only in one province. We know it's a main exists across Canada and one of the powerful examples is indigenous people who do not have access to clean drinking water. That's a problem across Canada. It does not help in making life better for people to target one place or another. It's something that exists everywhere and we've got to work together to make it better. Uh, I reject the notion of Quebec bashing. Uh, communities, uh, Francophone communities and Quebecers have long faced discrimination and we believe in building a society where everyone is free from discrimination and that, uh, that's the type of world we want to build. Next question, Nicolas Bovard from CBC News. 
Good morning. Just to uh, follow up a bit on Abigail's question, um, the conservatives and liberals both, you know, are putting forward strategies that they say will reduce speculation in the housing market. I'm curious to, uh, to ask you about uh, conservatives want to do this, um, you know, period where foreign buyers aren't able to invest. The liberals want to do this 12 month uh, sort of no flipping zone that Abigail mentioned. Do you support either of those? Would you like to add those to your plan? Do you think that those ideas are, are good ideas? Uh, the 12 month is actually completely useless. It doesn't really get at the problem at all. It just puts a, it just kind of pushes the problem down the road, kind of like what the liberals do. You know, they, they instead of dealing with the problem head on, they kind of try to distract from it or push it down the road. That's not going to actually make a difference. Uh, getting at foreign ownership or foreign investment is something that we also believe in. Absolutely, it's something we put forward, and we've got an aggressive foreign buyers tax that we would bring in to help discourage uh, foreign ownership because it's making it so that sometimes Canadians are competing with a very wealthy foreign company instead of being able to buy the first home. We also want to make sure that when it comes to getting at the root cause, the capital gains tax is one of the problems that encourage people to use the housing market like a stock market. And we want to fix that problem. Bring it back to what it used to be uh, not too long ago, about 20 years ago, and make sure that people are, are not using this housing market as a stock market and so that people can buy their first homes. Hi, Kino Lam from the Canadian Press. Hi, Mr. Singh. Uh, so I was wondering, how do you expect that any measures that involve making it easier for people to finance their homes rather than supply-side measures would just, won't just raise prices? I mean, we've seen time and again that this is what happens. So we believe uh, that there has to be a holistic solution. It can't just be one, and you'd be absolutely right if we just proposed one solution, that then that wouldn't fix the problem. Uh, we're proposing a suite of problem, or a suite of solutions to address all the problems. So one, we know that there's big money in housing, we want to get that out. We know there's not enough housing that's affordable, that's in people's budgets, so we want to build more homes that are affordable. We also know that some people need extra help in their first purchase of a home, we want to provide that help as well. Take it on their own, uh, they wouldn't address all the problems. Put, it, put together, it's a plan that deals with all the concerns that people have. Uh, the provincial government here uh, has raised concerns about brain drain in BC because of rising rents, uh, house prices, and a shortage of homes. So do you think 1.7 million homes will be enough for that? I first want to acknowledge the problem. That is a significant problem. People are leaving their communities because they can't afford to stay there. And I've met with young people who graduate and have good jobs, and they tell me, I want to stay in the Lower Mainland. I want to stay in Coquitlam or Port Moody Coquitlam. I want to stay in Vancouver or in Surrey. I want to stay here where my family is, where my friends are, where my job is, but I can't afford to. And so they're being forced to leave their communities. And that to me is wrong. It shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that people have to leave their homes because they can't afford to stay. And that's why we want to tackle this problem. And we absolutely believe we need to do as much as possible to make more homes that are affordable. Our plan that in total would create 1.7 million homes is I think a very bold step forward. Uh, we need to continue looking at this problem to find ways to make sure people can find housing, to find homes uh, in their budget, in their communities, and we'll continue to work on this. Next, we'll go to questions on Zoom. On Zoom, on Zoom. First question, we have Alex Barnwell from the Toronto Star. Hey, good morning. Thanks so much for taking my question from Zoom. Um, just, I wanted to ask you about your um, policy to roll back uh, in, in the platform we call them loopholes that the Liberals uh, have created for, for heavy industry in the carbon pricing scheme, where you've spoken about them being exempt from paying the carbon price. Um, if you were to do that and just apply, as I understand the policy is, the straight up carbon tax on industrial emissions, on all industrial emissions, wouldn't that lead to job losses and the closures of cement plants and steel production plants in Canada? Th th that policy was designed to protect them um, from uh, shifting production to places that don't have a carbon price. So if, if you change that system and dismantle it, wouldn't it lead to economic losses, job losses, and, and, and industrial facilities shutting down? You know, when we look at the price on pollution, the goal of it is to reduce emissions. When Canadians look at the price on pollution that, Car that Justin Trudeau put in place and feel that it's unfair that the biggest polluters are exempt. There are investments we can make to make sure we are creating good jobs. There are opportunities for us to invest in renewable energy, to retrofit and renovate homes and buildings so that they are using less energy, to invest in public transit and the electrification of transport. 
these are job creators. We can create thousands and thousands of jobs. We need to create jobs. There's no way we can fight the climate crisis without creating jobs. But it doesn't make sense if we want to tackle emissions that there is a plan, a, a price on pollution that exempts the, exempts the biggest polluters. That doesn't sit well with Canadians. That doesn't sit well with people here in BC who have seen the, the ravages of forest fires that have meant that we've lost an entire community of Lytton, where people can't even breathe the air, where people can't see the sky. Uh, we've seen the direct impacts of the, cl the climate crisis, and it doesn't make sense to try to tackle this cr crisis by exempting the biggest polluters. There is a better way, and that's what we're putting forward. So just as a follow-up then, if you were to eliminate that exemption though, are you okay with the fact that experts say this would lead to closures and job losses in the industries where the exemptions applies? Are you comfortable with that in the name of reducing emissions? Uh, our plan is to reduce emissions, and we absolutely know that we need to do that, but we are, will never uh, go down a path that leaves workers behind. So we believe at the same time, government has a responsibility to make investments so that we create jobs and we maintain jobs. There is a way to do that. I, I don't accept kind of the approach that the Liberals have taken for a long time that is just too hard to do. We can't fix this problem. It's, it's something we can't achieve. I don't agree with that. I think that Liberals want people to believe that it's impossible to actually make things better, that there's no way to fix this unless we make people lose their jobs. I don't buy that. I believe that we can fix this problem and we need to. We've got to tackle the climate crisis and we've got to be willing to make tough decisions. But for New Democrats, we're a workers' party. We'll never leave workers behind. We will always invest in creating good jobs. Bonjour, Monsieur Singh. Bonjour. Je voulais savoir, Monsieur Trudeau a annoncé ce matin un gros transfert fédéral pour la santé mentale. Qui, euh, donc, ce serait un transfert de 4,5 milliards de dollars sur 5 ans pour les provinces. Euh, J'aurais aimé savoir euh, ce que vous pensez de cette promesse. Est-ce que vous pensez que c'est euh, que, que la voie qu'on qu doit prendre? Avec les promesses de Justin Trudeau en général, le grand problème est qu'il donne des, des belles paroles souvent. Il dit des bonnes choses, mais euh, ses actions ne, ne rassemblent pas ses, ses paroles. Et, et c'est toujours le cas. Bon, il a promis dans la dernière élection de 2019 de, de créer une assurance médicament universelle. Et euh, à la première fois qu'il a eu l'opportunité de voter pour ce projet de loi, pour la science médicament universelle, il a voté contre. Donc euh, le, grand problème avec, euh, le grand problème avec toutes les promesses de Justin Trudeau, c'est comment on peut croire qu'il va les faire. Bon, il a promis des grandes choses souvent et ne livre pas la marchandise. Pour nous, les néo-démocrates, on comprend comment la santé mentale, c'est un grand problème parce que c'était toujours difficile d'avoir accès aux services de soins de santé mentale. Et maintenant, euh, c'est plus encore difficile à cause de la pandémie. Les gens sont isolés, les gens font face à des grandes difficultés et la santé mentale a été frappée fort. Donc, euh, ce qu'on propose, c'est d'améliorer nos soins de santé, investir pour plus de ressources et ça doit inclure les, les soins de santé mentale aussi. En deuxième question, j'aimerais savoir, euh, M. Trudeau euh, s'est dit ouvert à travailler notamment avec la Colombie-Britannique qui aimerait euh, voir une décriminal décriminalisation des opioïdes. J'aimerais savoir euh, qu'est-ce que vous pensez de cette question. Est-ce que vous êtes d'accord avec ça? Et ça me semble être une autre proposition de la part de M. Trudeau. Euh, merci pour la question. Euh, J'étais euh, toujours en faveur d'une approche différente pour aider les gens qui font face à dépendance. Euh, on a vu l'approche dans le passé ne fonctionne pas. On a une crise d'opioïdes et on a perdu plusieurs des vies. Et l'approche de la criminalisation des gens ne fonctionne pas. Cette approche a déjà montré qu'elle ne fonctionne pas. Donc, ce que je veux faire, c'est de, de répondre aux besoins des gens avec la compassion, avec euh, les soins de santé, avec euh, la, réhabilitation, la réhabilitation, au lieu d'une approche de justice criminelle. Parce que ce sont les gens qui ont besoin d'aide et ça va sauver leur vie, mais aussi protéger les communautés. Donc notre approche va être différente que les libéraux et les conservateurs 
on, on veut répondre avec une approche de santé et de compassion au lieu de justice communale. Ceci conclut notre conférence de presse. Merci, thank you. Merci, thank you so much.